Hello everyone, my name is Primrose Pineda. Welcome to the third and last installment of our webinar series. There will be two parts for this session. First, we will have Dr. Kim's talk and then to be followed by an AFM live demo by Charles Kim. Before we begin, let me give you a quick overview of today's session. Your mics have been disabled by default to give our speakers an uninterrupted speaking experience. If you click the raise your hand button at the end of the talk, I can unmute your line so you could ask the question. Or if you would prefer, you may type in any questions that you have in mind using the question module on the GoToWebinar dashboard at any time during the webinar. We'll answer them in sequence to the best of our ability at the end of the session. If time does not permit for all the questions, we will send follow-up email to attendees to answer those additional questions. So moving right along, it is now my pleasure to introduce our speaker for this webinar, Dr. Kim of Park Systems. Dr. Kim, please. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Jay Kim from Park System. And uh, of course, thank you for attending this webinar. And uh, I'm gonna today. I'm gonna talk about, of course, AFM atomic force microscope. But today, about the option mode to monitor samples property. Uh, well, for the first session at the, on the August, we reviewed the what is the AFM and what is a good AFM. And for the second session, we presented AFM imaging, non-contact, contact, and tapping mode. And today, for the sold and last session, uh, I'm gonna talk about AFM option mode to investigate the samples property. Okay, this is today's, uh, this is the outline of today's talk. Uh, first of all, we briefly look into the overview of AFM option, then move to the electrical property measurement, and then nanomechanical property measurement. Of course, in AFM, the main feature should be surface topography, the height image. But we can investigate lots of samples property using AFM. Uh, for example, the electric, electric mode, such as conductivity, surface potential, uh, current, resistance, capacitance, and other, other electrical properties. Also, we can measure the, also uh, the mechanical property, mechanical mode, like a modulus, adhesion, uh, deformation, a frictional force, and other mechanical property can be measured by using AFM option mode. Of course, also we can obtain magnetic, uh, thermal, and other like uh, this electro, electric chem electrochemical properties as well, we can measure it. And like this, AFM is widely used to study on various mechanical, electrical, magnetic, and thermal properties at nanoscale, of course, as well as topography. And today, among this last of applications, uh, I want to highlight electrical and mechanical property measurement, the most popular and versatile options. Okay, let's start with the electrical property measurement. In, a, in electrical property measurement, of course, here many kinds of options uh, like EFM, KPFM, PFM, and other things. And in here, eight most, but no, there are lots of other spin off electrical property measurement modes. But in here today, we will discuss the most useful and popular four modes EFM, KPFM, PFM, and conductive AFM. Okay, EFM, the electrostatic force microscope. And it is just for 
mechanism of local electrical electric sorry local electrical properties on a sample surface and by measuring the electrostatic force between the sample surface and a fan tip and to do this we need to use we need to use the conductive material called a tip like this conductive material means uh, for example gold or platinum or conducting diamond and other some matters and it is one good example of conductive material coated tape this one is a gold coated tape and one interesting things is just normal fm tip case it has around 10 nanometer tip radius but in case of this conductive material coated tape because of this coating this tip radius is a bit uh, become larger like for example in here 30 or 40 nanometer but sometimes uh, more than 100 nanometer so we need to remember this radius is different and here comes the simple diagram of efm uh, once again efm measures the various electrical properties of simple surface such as localized charge and surface potential, surface potential distribution by applying an electric field between AFM tip, AFM, conductive AFM tip and sample. And to detect the electrical signal, here these two kinds of locking amplifiers are adopted. The first one, this first locking is for non-contact imaging and the second other one the second locking is for efm signal so means we can obtain both height like a topography and efm signal simultaneously actually this is the quite simple concept of efm once again using conductive tape and sample we can measure the height from the first locking and also we can measure the like this electric electrical properties simultaneously this one this is the efm concept and here's the kpfm the kelvin proof force microscope but this kpfm is the advanced technique from efm it can measure the quantitative surface potential and work function of the sample surface, while EFM measured relative difference. Of course, it is electrical, me electrical measurement, so it requires conductive material coated tape. The EFM and KFM must just same concept and diagram, but one different thing is that KPFM uses feedback system, and this feedback system compensate the EFM amplitude and phase signal by applying this DC bias, DC bias to tip to nullify the potential difference between tip and sample. Let's go to more details one. Okay, here, this one, the total voltage between tip and sample can be described like this. Here, VDC means the DC bias we apply, and VS means the surface potential. And um, electrostatic force also can be expressed like this. And just simply speaking, in EFM, just collect the whole signal of this distance. But in KFFM, a system apply the DC bias to make the general value of this term. It means if we can track this DC bias, and it is the surface potential because DC bias to make to make the general value, DC bias will be same as this surface potential. So it means in summary, EFM and KPFM. Uh, both of most can measure 
the electrical properties, but EFM is just relative comparison. But KFM can detect the quantitative values. Like this animation, yeah. And this is, it is quite good example of EFM measurement. Based on the PET software, nanowires in here. And from the height image, okay, we can see some nanowires in here, but cannot see, cannot see some clear one. But EFM image, EFM signal, we can clearly see the difference and clearly see that this contrast of between P, PET substrate and nanowire. Here is the another one, the carbon nanotube. It's quite same, same as previous, previous image. In height image, there is no CNT. Oh yeah, very difficult to see the CNT, the carbon nanotube, but, and then if we didn't apply the bias, there is no carbon nanotubes in here. There is no signal. But when we apply the tip bias, in this case, minus eight voltage of tip bias, we can see, we can check quite obvious nano, uh, carbon nanotube and obvious EFM signal. And next we compare the electrical property of hair surface before and after hair treatment. Of course, once again, from the height image, oh, there is no difference, just height image, the air AFM height image, but KPFM image, like a potential image, use the difference between before and after. And this damaged hair has negative charge and this surface potential goes positive after this treatment. So like this, we can see this surface potential or electrical property from the EFM and KPFM. Um, next is the PFM, the Piaggio Electric Force Microscope. Using PFM, we can measure the electromechanical properties. Uh, simply speaking, the piezoelectric effect. And of course, it is of course it is an electric electrical property measurement. So we need to use conductive material coated tape. But uh, actually, EFM and KPFM is non-contact mode based. But PFM case, this this one is contact mode based. So we need we should apply more hard conductive material like a conductive diamond. Of course, we can use gold gold coated tip, but due to the this contact mode uh, contact mode base, uh, that gold coated layer can be easily disappeared or damaged. So we recommend this conductive material conductive diamond or hard conductive material coated tip. Um, briefly, this one is a simple diagram of PFM. Um, briefly, this contact between AFM tip and sample and apply the bias, then if sample has a like, pH electric property, we can, we can monitor this PFM signal. Like this, we can investigate the uh, vertical and lateral displacement of Piaggio sample and make an image of Piaggio signal contrast. That is one example. Uh, it is a quite famous Piaggio or ferroelectric material, the bismuth ferrite, or we, we also can call it BFO. And like this, we can see totally different aspect between height, vertical, and lateral PFM signal. So like this, using PFM, we can monitor them on nanoscale. 
And next is the conductive AFM, the CAFM. And using conductive AFM, just simply speaking, we can measure current value, current signal. And it is also a bit uh, contact mode based. So the hard conductive material coated head is recommended. Just similar as the PFM. And the concept of conductive AFM is here, and it's also quite simple. The same as the contact mode, keep contact to the sample surface and scanning. But difference is different, different thing is connect the current amplifier and apply the bias. Then we can see the height image, the contact mode height image with current image. The key part of conductive AFM is this current amplifier. Uh, there are two types. One is VICA, the Variable Enhanced Current Amplifier, and the other one is UCA. This one is the Ultra Low Current Amplifier. Different thing is the detect detecting range. Let's say, just roughly say, if your sample has a high conductivity, you should apply this VICA. But if your sample has a low conductivity, for example, less than a few picometer, pico ampere or less than pico ampere, you have to apply this UCA, ultra low current amplifier. So means depends on the signal or depends on the sample type, we can apply each current amplifier. And here, uh, let me show you one interesting application of conductive AFM. In device field or in semiconductor field, connection or uh, defect investigation is quite important. It's very important, but not easy work. But using conductive AFM, we can simply monitor those kind of defects. Of course, uh, from the optical microscope or EM, like a SEM or other TEM image, even AFM height image like this, we cannot recognize the defect. But here, this current image, conductive AFM image, very easy to check that. Next is, next is the more obvious example. Compared to these compared to current images, we can see and we can check the interconnection of device. Like this, oh, there is no signal and no connection, and we can call it failed. Yeah, here. But in this case, wow, we see that this all connection, and we, we can say passed. Of course, from the optical or just height image. We cannot see, we cannot see that. But from the current image, we can clearly see this difference and we can successfully check the, this defect analysis. And this one is quite a famous application on device or semiconductor field. Okay, let's move to next option, the nanomechanical property measurement. For the nanomechanical property measurements, uh, here I just present two options, just two options, but very powerful options. First, spectroscopy and pinpoint nanomechanical mode. First, spectroscopy is the fundamental of mechanical property measurement using AFM. And this first distance curve or we can call the FD curve is the output, the result of first spectroscopy. Here we have a AFM tip and sample, both approach and contact. This one is contact mode based, like contact and push the sample with some specific force. And at that time, we can check the this sample's deformation and cantilever's mending. 
Finally, we can make a graph of relationship between G movement and applied force. And that is a force distance curve. For example, this X axis means a G scanner movement or distance. And this Y axis is the force of life force. So that's the force distance curve. This one, this is the one cycle of FD curve. Let's start from this number one. When a FM tip and sample are quite far away, there there are no there is no interaction. But when the tip FM tip close 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 to to the sample surface and contact, that is number two, and apply the force until some specific value, or we can call the set point like this, and reach to this value, lead track number four. And this point, number five, pull off, detached, detached between FM tip and sample. And this number six is down to the initial one, initial stage, no interaction. This one is just one cycle of first distance curve. So from the FD curve, we can obtain some uh, several mechanical properties. For example, stiffness or modulus from this slough of FD approach curve, and this adhesion value, like adhesion force or energy, from lead tracker. Also, sample deformation or energy dissipation or approaching lead track stiffness can be calculated from just one FD curve. This slide shows some examples of FD curve at each case. Let's say in case of hard sample. Hard sample has a quite stiff, stiff slope of approach curve like this. But soft sample case, uh, relative broad slope you can see compared with this hard sample. Also, adhesion case, if sample has a low adhesion, like a low adhesive sample, this adhesion value will be low, like this. But high adhesive sample, like a sticky sample, or it has st yeah, sticky sample, it has a quite high adhesion force. And next is the pinpoint mode, pinpoint nanomechanical mode. And pinpoint mode, is just simply speaking, this is a mapping or imaging technique. Set the scan, set the scan size and pixel and perform the first spectroscopy at every single pixel. After that, construct the imaging of each mechanical properties information. So stiffness or modulus or adhesion, deformation and other mechanical property imaging can be investigated with height image. For example, let's say 256 by 256 pixel, we said, it means the system performed the FT curve of around 65,000 something numbers. And they collect every single information, including mechanical property and height image, and then make a, make one image, not one image, make an image of each channel. So we can see or we can check the imaging of height and mechanical properties. Like this. One FD curve and move to the next pixel. FD curve, FD curve, FD curve. Measure all, all area. And like these images, two different polymers can be distinguished on viewpoint of mechanical properties using pinpoint mode. This one, the substrate is a PS polystyrene, and the bulk modulus is about one or two gigapascal. And this dot, this bright dot, are LDP, the low the low density polyethylene, and the bulky 
perk modulus of LDP is around 100 megapascal. And from this modulus, modulus image, we can check that those numbers. Uh, this okay, this number is quite small, but here around 1.3 gigapascal, it is the it is the PS. And here around 100 megapascal, this one is LDP. Like this, we can check we can check this quantitative mechanical property analysis using pinpoint mode. And last month at the uh, second session, samples property can be distinguished using phase image of tapping mode. But actually that, that is, it is a relative comparison. But in pinpoint mode, we can directly compare the blended or blended material or blended polymer with quantitative analysis. And also quality case from like compared with the, this tapping and pinpoint mode, pinpoint mode has a better quality. Um, before finishing the, the session, I would like to show you one very interesting application using FD curve. And generally, the addition of FD curve means a just sample sample surface property. Just a sample surface addition, some addition level. But if we can modify, if we can modify or add some material to IFM tip, the addition means interaction. Interaction between this material and this substrate or sample surface. For example, in this case, this AH peptide highly interacts with this lipid monolayer substrate. So in case of this uh, H-peptide modified AFMT, we can see this adhesion first, adhesion value. And this is the interaction between H and between peptide and this substrate. But in case of no, no peptide, no H-peptide, there is no interaction. So we can see the adhesion and we, can, we cannot see the adhesion. And like this, and like this statistics, this scatter plots, scatter plots shows that all individual binding events as a function of audition first and lecture length. And this one, this is the peptide attached, peptide attached APMT, and it shows about 200, uh, 186 piconeutron of first, but no peptide case. It's just 43 piconutin. 43 piconutin of adhesion force. And to prove this concept, we treat this blocking material on the substrate. And depend, depends on the, this concentration of blocking material, this adhesion value is decreased. And like this, this dark area means a low adhesion value. And also, it means uh, decreasing the number of available receptor sites because this blocking material already interacts with uh, this lipid monolayer, and there's no chance to interact between peptide and monolayer. And this is just one application, but quite famous and quite interesting application of FD curve and AFM tip functionalization. Okay, this is my last slide, and to sum up, AFM has many operation modes, such as, of course, light, and electrical, mechanical, electromechanical, and, or electrochemical, and magnetic, thermal, and other properties measurement. And researcher can choose proper operation mode at each case, depends on your sample and depends on your research. And we believe AFM will make your research more profound and valuable. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, just let us know. Then we can we can communicate and we 
we can talk about your inquiries. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for that very informative lecture, Dr. Kim. So now we will be moving on our live demo session. So, ladies and gentlemen, Charles Kim of Park Systems. Uh, my name is Charles Kim. I am an application scientist of Park Systems. Today, I'm going to show you the EFM and the KFM application. Actually, the EFM and KPFM is one of the most popular uh, application in a lot of fields. For example, semiconductor or polymer and many other fields, the EFM and KPFM is used for uh, characterizing their sample surface potential or work function like that. So before I start the EFM and the KPFM live demo, I would like to simply show you the PAC AFM hardware first. Uh, this is the uh, simple overview of our PAC AFM. And there's one unique point of PAC AFM is XY scanner and G scanner are decoupled each other. So the, in the underneath, you can find the XY scanner and at the top, you can find the G scanner. And from this kind of structure, we can get the very flat XY motion. So it makes possible to measure the flat surface without any scanner artifact like the other companies, AFM. And also this decoupled G scanner make a fast G server motion and it makes possible to do the true non-contact mode. And here, the red dot uh, pointed part is the AFM head. So this is the rear picture of the AFM head. Uh, you can find the probe hand, which is the part of the mounting the AFM probe. And this is also one other more unique point of PAC AFM because uh, normally the AFM probe is very tiny like this, only this small pieces of uh, silicone vapor is the cantilever. So user need to use uh, this one by handling by the tweezer, but sometimes it's very difficult to handling this. But the PAC AFM is supported uh, this kind of bigger size of the metal chip carrier. Then the user can handling this by hand, by fingers, without any tools and it's also very reduced the danger of the drop the tip or the broken the tip during the uh, uh, preparation of the uh, scanning. And after mount the probe, you can load the head into the AFM main body. And after that, you can find the cantilever and you can adjust the, adjust the AF, uh, cantilever position at the center of the AFM vision. After that, uh, actually the AFM system is using the SID, which is the uh, kind of laser to detecting the cantilever motion. Uh, so you need to align the laser on the top of the cantilever. But if you use the PAC AFM probe, then you don't need to the, control the beam alignment because the, every time the cantilever is pre aligned at the center of the vision. But when you use the uh, not mounted from the PAC system cantilever, then you need to do this kind of job for align the uh, laser. And after align the laser on the cantilever, you need to align the laser on the position sensitive you know, detecting sensor like this again. Then the cantilever uh, preparation is done. So this is the sample, uh, which is I show you the live demo for the EFM and the KFFM. The, this sample has two different um, electronic patterns. Uh, at the left hand side is ground, electrically grounded, and the right hand side is connected to the AFM sample bias line. That means if I apply the any kind of the sample bias here, then it's 
changeable the surface potential manually. After that, if I scan in here, then you can see the zero grounded electrical property. And in, in the other hand, you can see the different potential which you apply to the sample bias at the same time. So let me show you the real measurement. So this is the smart scan software, which is the control the PAC AFM system. And the sample and the cantilever is already mounted and already prepared here. But the tip is now far from the surface. So let me approach to engage the tip close to the sample surface. Then now the line scanning is started. Then you can see the G height signal from the top over here. And now there is the yellow line and the blue line, the, which is the forward and the backward line of the AFM. Uh, the AFM actually the scan in the same position twice in the forward and backward scanning. So when these two signals are matched well like this, then you can say the AFM measurement is going well. So now the forward and backward lines are matching very well. So I can start the EFM measurement first. For the EFM, actually there is no signal here, as you can see. So to, do, to see the EFM signal, we need to use the second locking amplifier. Actually, as already Dr. Kim mentioned in the previous talk, we need to use the second locking amplifier. Uh, the, for the EFM, generally we use the 17 kilohertz of frequency T bias. So now the drive is the zero. So let me give the one volt of the drive force. Then you can see something changing on the EFM amplitude and the phase. It, now I apply the EFM, the modulating here, but still there is not specific changes here because the left hand side and the right hand side are both are zero now because the sample bias is zero here. So please watching here. Then let me change it to the one volt. Then as you can see here, EFM amplitude and phase are changed. The EFM amplitude is represent the electrostatic force or uh, magnitude of electrostatic force. So how big it is or how small it is. And the EFM phase is represent to show you the electrostatic force direction information, for example, the positive or the negative. So for example, when I apply the one, the EFM amplitude signal is, has this kind of value, 1.5 millivolt and 800 microvolt. So if I change it to the minus one volt, Uh, it's a little bit decreased, but still this one and this electrode and this electrode has higher electrostatic force. But in the in case in the case of the EFM phase, this one and this one are upside down. So I will show you again. If I change it to one this higher paid signal down to the neg uh, negative minus 100. So let me start the scanning the EFM first with, with the, and I will change the sample bias and please see here. If I start from the zero voltage, then there's no EFM signal, EFM amplitude and phase, 
there is nothing special, but only small differences between electrode and the silicon substrate, like this. And uh, during the measurement, if I change the sample bias to the 0.5, then the one by one different electrodes are shows higher amplitude signal. And if I see the EFM phase, and also you can see the different differences because of the potential is changing now. So if I, measuring the surface like this with different uh, sample biases. Actually, I already measured the image because of the time limitation of today's talk. I already finished the measurement like this. Please see the, this slide. The EFM amplitude I mentioned before, the is represent the magnitude of the electrostatic force. And the phase is the polarity of the electrostatic force. So for to measuring this image, I changed the sample bias from the 0, 0 0.51, 0, minus 0 0.5, minus 1. Even the minus 0 0.5 and minus 0 0.5 has different direction of the force, but the color of their own electrostatic force in the EF amplitude are very same. But in the EFM phase, my plus and plus has the darker, and the, that means the negative phase, but the plus has the positive phase. So from these two images, you can guess, you can analyze your own sample surface electrostatic property. And when I draw the line here, you can see the increase in the electrostatic force, magnitude, uh, depending on the sample bias, and it's written to the zero and minus 0 0.5, minus one. But when you see the zero, in the negative means the plus sample bias, and the positive means minus sample bias. This is the EFM. But uh, there's one question is, even I apply the 0 0.5 here, but the number of the EFM amplitude is only under the one millivolt. But this is not real uh, value of the potential, but we want to know. So for that, we need to use the Kelvin flow microscope. Uh, the KPFM is the kind of branch mode of the EFM. So you can measure the quantitative surface potential and the work function signal from the surface. And there are various, the KFFM mode, but today I'm gonna show you the AM KFFM mode, which is the amplitude modulation mode and the frequency modulation mode. And one of the frequency modulation mode, the name is the sideband KFFM. And to know the KPFM measurement, we need to understand this one first. If there's two different sample, two different material, when they have some distance, then there's just their own work function, like uh, this and this. But when they close and connected by some electrical connection, then it's matching the Fermi level and there will come the contact potential difference between them. So this uh, energy gap difference is make a electrical field between them like this. But our own, uh, our, uh, proper, our purpose of the KFFM is to uh, eliminate, to compensate this field so if I apply the DC bias between the sample and the tip, which the same as uh, the VCPD, then I can uh, the compensate the CPD value. So from this 
uh, kind of circuit, we can know the potential value of the sample surface. So let me show you the how to measure the KFFM. The KFFM is kind of a branch, kind of sub mode of the EFM. So like this, when the EFM scanning is going well, you can jump to the KFFM mode. Click the KFM, KFFM, but before starting the KFFM mode, we need to tune the EFM phase. Because the AFM system doesn't know where is the positive or negative. So to let this know the system, the polarity of the surface, we need to tune this, uh, this phase tuning. So it's very simple. Just click the tuning and click the start. Then system automatically find the uh, phase offset and this value will the applied here automatically. After that, just click the server. Then you can see the potential signal is coming. Previously, when I measured the EFM mode, the potential was zero, but now I turned on the servo tip bias feedback, then you can see the EFM amplitude and the phase is compensate, so it's become zero, but you can see the potential signal here. So it's same like before, if I apply the voltage, then you can see only connected electrode has higher potential. So if I draw the line, it has about the 500 millivolt. Ideally, it must has the one volt, but this is the uh, amplitude modulation mode. So that's why it has some averaging impact. So anyway, please see the number of uh, this value. So if I make a two times bigger sample bias, then it's increasing the two times bigger. And if I apply the negative, then it turns to the upside down like this. This electrode become the negative value. And also the same as like a plus one volt, it has 500 millivolt. If I change, apply the minus two volt, it has minus 1.1 of the potential. So let me scan the same images. So let me start from the zero board. Then there's no specific differences in the KFFM potential image. But if I change the sample bias to the 0 0.5, then the potential value will change to the brighter color, like this. And if I make it double, then it has brighter color than the 0 0.5. And also to save the time of this talk, I already measured the KFFM image before. So it's same as like before in the EFM, I used the six different sample biases. So when I draw the line according to the uh, different sample bias line. When I apply the zero, it shows almost zero potential. When I apply the 0 0.5, it's near the 0 0.5, but because of the averaging, it has a little bit smaller value. But anyway, when it's measured the one volt, it's become double. And it, when I change to the zero again, it downs to the zero. 
and when I apply the minus 0.5, it has the similar value. It's a little bit smaller than the minus 0.5. And when I give the minus one volt, it has the double again. But uh, the disadvantage of the AA mode uh, KFFM is that the averaging effect. The AM KFFM is the measuring the electrostatic force itself. You know, the force is quite long range force. And because we are using the elect, uh, magnet, uh, sorry, the electro conductive, the conductive material coated cantilever, that whole part of the cantilever is uh, working as like an antenna to detecting the electrostatic force. So even the, this line is the grounded line, but according to the uh, surf, uh, sample bias changes, also the grounded line has changed the potential as well. So this is the uh, disadvantage of the AM KFFM. So let me show you then how to measure the sideband KFFM. The sideband KFFM is also very simple. For to do the sideband KFFM, just change the mode, scanning mode here, the sideband. And also, the, the previously the Amplitude modulation KFFM are uh, were used the 17 kilohertz, but in case of the sideband, we just use the small value of the uh, frequency. For example, between two to five kilohertz. So let me use the three kilohertz in this time. And after that, click the tuning and click the start. Then something different point over here is you can see the two different color which he mentioned uh, right and the left. The because the sideband KFFM is uh, use the uh, side peak of the resonance frequency. So for example, if I apply the three kilohertz then there will be uh, come the 72.9 plus 3 kilohertz side peak and 72.9 and minus 3 kilohertz. So minus means the left and the plus means the plus, uh, right. So both two uh, peaks uh, information is come here. And let me start the line scanning again. Then you can see the EFM amplitude and phase difference are come here. So for the KFFM, let me check the servo. Then the potential signal is coming like before, but I guess you can feel this difference compared to the previous image is it's much clear and it has much sharp edges here. And previously when I applied the 0 0.5 voltage because of the averaging impact, it doesn't show the 0 0.5 milli, uh, volt. But now it's almost exactly the same. The, because the sideband KFFM is monitoring the electrostatic force gradient only, and that gradient is only measured with the end of the tip apex. So it doesn't uh, influence by the whole cantilever. So it's, it makes the possible the much better lateral resolution like this. So if I change to the one volt, of the sample bias, the different uh, the difference between the grounded 
and the sample bias applied electrode is almost same to the one volt like this. So let's start the same measurement again. So point five. Then the value of the potential is 0.5 and one, two, three, the potential value is almost close to the one volt, like this, 999.8 millivolt. And if I change to minus 0.5, also the difference between grounded and minus 0 0.5 of our electrode is 500 millivolt and minus one is almost minus one millivolt like this so let's see the rear image and i already measured the same images by using the sideband kffm so when you see the uh, sample bias uh, apply the electrode here in the red line, then you can see the zero is almost zero, 0 0.5 is 0 0.5, one, zero minus 0 0.5. But there is some small gap here, here. And this gap is from the tip uh, potential. So, to know the exact work function of the sample, we, we need to uh, do the calibration to, uh, to compensate this kind of small offset. And also when I draw the line in the grounded line, there is no any artifact from the averaging from the near uh, electrode. Even they are very close, but there is nothing changes in the potential. So when I compare the AM and the sideband KFFM, the sideband has much close and much uh, exact leisure compared to the AM. And even and also when you compare the this this line and this line, you can see the uh, the sideband has very flat and same value on the ground line. And uh, for the last is the calibrate the work function. Previously, I said there is more offset. That offset is come from the cantilever uh, work function. So to uh, compensate this value, we need to measure some sample which we already know the work function. So if we have some sample, if we already know the work function of the sample, then we can use it as a reference. So for example, here, if I scan the sample surface, you can see the work function at the third channel here. But the work function of this electrode has almost minus 100 milli electro volt without, uh, before the calibration. But for example, if this electrode is gold, then gold should have the 5.1 electro volt. Then you can pretty see here work function offset. Because we already know this sample must have the 5.1 electron board because it's the gold. Then if I apply the 5.2 as a calibration number, three, then you can see the this gold electrode has almost 5.1. After calibrate like this, if you measure your unknown sample, 
then that value is the real work function of your sample because the work function of the tip is compensated by that offset value in the smart scan. So this is the one example of the work function calibration. The sample has the gold and aluminum and gold, and in between them there is the silicon oxide. And when I uh, calibrate by using the gold, then aluminum surface is following like this. Then that value is very similar to our expectation. So this is the way how to measure the work function by using the KFFM. And thank you for uh, coming today. And that's all what I prepared today. And thank you for your attention. Thank you. OK, thank you, Charles. So at this time, we will be fielding questions from anyone. I'll give everyone here a couple of minutes to digest the information that was presented. And it seems that it's all the questions that we have so far. So uh, mm -hmm. attendees, you can continue to type in any questions as we wrap up. And if anything comes in, we will reach out to the attendees via email afterwards and answer all those questions. So thank you, Dr. Kim and Charles. Thank so, you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. So that wraps up our webinar. On behalf of Dr. Kim, Charles, and the rest of the staff here at the Technical Marketing Team for Park Systems, thank you all for making time amid your busy schedules to join us here today. It's been our pleasure to host this webinar, and we hope to see you again at our future webinars from Park Systems.